Hello guys, I'm Bill. I wanted to uh, I wanted to do something a little different. No no production, no script. I just wanted to come down here to the South Jetty. Um, this is actually one of my favorite places. I had to come down here and sit. I'll come down here in the morning when it's kind of quiet, watch the boats go in and out, and uh, enjoy a, a little of my arthritis medicine <laughs> from from time to time and. And uh, yeah, it really does help with my RA, but that's that's not why I'm here. But I wanted to try something a little different. But I also wanted to to do this to, to thank you to to introduce myself. It was it was actually a, a comment that was left about two weeks ago, and the reply to that content just or that comment just really summed everything up. And it was somebody had mentioned something uh, like. I feel like I'm behind, I, I'm new here. And the reply, the immediate reply was, don't feel bad, we're all new here. <laughs> and as soon, as soon as I read that, I started to chuckle. I said, I was thinking, brother, true words have never been spoken. I'm new here too. And, <laughs> and let me explain. That Bigfoot video that now has right at 100,000 views. I posted that thing 19 months ago, well over a year and a half ago. And then a couple months later, I did the golf ball story, which uh, is, a, is a pretty good one. But yeah, they were originally meant just to be a couple diary entry, entries for the, you know, the great, great, great grandkids somewhere down the line. But also it's just kind of a goof for my uh, golf buddies down at the Elks Lodge. And, uh, yeah, I bounced along for 16, 17, 18 months with, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 subscribers. God, I remember the day where I, I hit 50 subscribers and 2,000 views. I'm thinking, holy schmoly, this isn't really what I was looking for, but, yo, it's fun. And, of course, YouTube analytics everything is broken into blocks of uh, like 28 days or 365 days prior to the day you're in now. And I was, <laughs> I was pulling up the analytics graph showing my wife, <coughs> Candace, and uh, according to YouTube, in the 28-day block prior to today, August the 5th, 28 days ago, I had 60 subscribers. 60. Today, I've got 1,070. That's over 1,000 subscribers in 28 days, four weeks. 100,000 views, 10,000 watch hours. Thank you. I wasn't expecting any of this, but it's a lot of fun, I got to tell you. You guys obviously kind of like what I do, and apparently I'm, you know, mildly <laughs> entertaining, and like I said, I am having a hell of a lot of fun, so yeah, I just want to say a thank you again, and uh, it was Joseph Fuller. Joseph Fuller, I think it was. I'll, I'll check it again, but the closest I can tell, he was the 1,000th subscriber. In fact, I had it written down here somewhere. But anyway, yeah, it was kind of funny. But I don't know. Uh, like I say, yeah, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, and, and I'm not doing takes. I'm just sitting down here bullshitting. And I would kind of like to do this sort of thing uh, a little more. So, yeah, I'm in. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do it here. Uh, but in order for me to do this sort of thing, to, to get in front of the camera once in a while, which, which I would enjoy doing, uh, there are a couple of things that I need to clear up just so that I feel better about doing this. Number one, yeah, the my front teeth are the reason you don't take your guard off the table saw. Uh, about a month ago, a little piece kicked back, caught me in the lip. And now they just want to redo everything, and I'm dragging my feet. So, yeah. Uh, and the other one is a little more important. And uh, let me show you something here. 
I got my little bag of goodies and my uh, cup of coffee down on the jetties. But indulge me for just a moment. This will make sense in just a, a few seconds. But this is a picture of my father and I about, well, about 16 years ago now. And uh, that, that fat mess over here is me. In this picture right here, about 16 years ago, I was just a, a biscuit over 350 pounds. 350. Today, on the scale this morning, I was 192. And I'll be 68 years old in uh, December, the end of this month. So, uh, yeah, as a 68-year-old, I still uh, like to think I can still go a couple rounds. And there is a cheat code for that, and that's not the purpose of this little speech. But I'm on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. And, I mean, let me put it to you like this, guys. I, I have lost 160 pounds. Uh, about half of that was just in the last two years when I started on TRT. And when you artificially reintroduce a hormone to a body that hasn't had any for a long time, testosterone, sometimes you'll get little minor uh, mood and, and uh, mood fluctuations. Uh, and with me, that manifests in, like if I'm telling a story that I get real emotional about that's real intense for me, or if you're just singing that favorite song, that you get to the chorus and you just want to belt it out, you know, ACDC, Robert Earl Keen, uh, hell, P. Diddy, <laughs> but you get to where you just want to belt that out, well, with me, it, it triggers the little choke-up reflex, and uh, I just nothing I can do about it, that's just the, the byproduct of all of this raging testosterone, and I wouldn't trade it for the world, I really wouldn't, and if you guys are interested, I, I do have another channel that I just set up uh, that's just going to be guy stuff. If, if you're curious about TRT, we'll talk about it over there. It's called uh, Tarzan's Grandpa. <laughs> that's the name of the channel. That came from a buddy of mine, uh, Bob, who's the head of public works here in town. And he's seen most of this transition take place. And he was joking with me a while back. He's going, damn, Bill, you're starting to look like Tarzan's Grandpa. <laughs> and... You know, bang, there's a channel. So I've got the name and the logo posted, and I'm going to do a, a little TRT video over there. Okay, enough said. So the reason I'm belaboring this issue is that there are going to be stories that I'm going to tell, especially the one that I've been teasing that I am going to do. And it won't just be from the TRT, but in that one, you're, you're going to see me break down. That one's going to be real tough for me to tell. I think I mentioned before, I've only told that story one time in my entire life, and that's to my current wife, Candace, and that was only once. And with that one, I'm not going to do multiple takes. I'm not going to do it two or three times and pick the best one. No. No. I'm going to sit right down here because it happened right out here. That's where it happened. That's where most of everything happened is right out here. But I'm going to run through that one one time, one take, warts and all, and then it's going back in the box. And here it is. It's, it's TRT. I'm choking up a little bit. But I'm only making a point of it because you, you're going to see it. And guys being what they are, you know, locker room humor, um, I don't want anybody to mistake this for being a, a weepy little bitch. <laughs> it's the testosterone, guys. And if anybody wants to tease me about that, well, brother, boat ramp is as good a place as any. <laughs> but there's, there's been some real come-to-Jesus meetings on that boat ramp. In fact, I've shed blood on that boat ramp, and that's that's a story I'm going to tell you down here, where I've uh, 
earned the name uh, around the boat basin of uh, Captain Crunch. That's what I was known as for a couple of years. Here comes the surf. I love it down here. I hope this mic works okay. Um, yeah, the guys, long story short, I was carrying your wife around my waist for about 20 years, 160 pounds. And the kicker to that is, all that time, not one happy ending. I mean, you know, throw a guy a bone on his birthday, right? But we're empowered now. Yeah, I miss Mayberry. <laughs> but I haven't said that. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little story. If, you know, if we're going to take this little journey, as they say, and if you guys are, you know, semi sort of interested in, in who I am and how I got to be this way, I'm going to tell you the story right out here where a seven-year-old boy knew in an instant what he was going to do. Now, I grew up, damn, get a little sip of water here. I grew up over in Canby, middle of the Willamette Valley. Yeah, here comes the sun. Middle of the Willamette Valley, about 30 miles south of Portland. Um, the absolute belly button of Dodd's Green Country. Um, beautiful. And uh, we were outdoorsy kind of folks. Uh, Dad owned a, a, a commercial contracting. Uh, he was a commercial concrete contractor. Did a lot of warehouse work and big projects in Portland. And we always did the, the fishing. Sorry. We always did the fishing and the hunting. You know, we had a boat and a in a pickup camper and, and used them both. And during fishing season, salmon season, would would come down here. Would go out of Coos Bay or out of Bandon, depending on uh, where the fish were running. Bandon's uh, about 30 miles down the coast, Coquille River. But uh, one day we were out here, uh, we had about a 22-foot fiberglass boat, little cutty cabin on the front. You know, seaworthy little craft, good boat. And it was uh, my dad, my Uncle Bob, uh, my cousin Ronnie, and me. Ronnie was about my age, maybe a little bit older. And we're out uh, trolling, salmon fishing, but, well, maybe four, five miles off the coast. Uh, you know, we're offshore a little ways. And uh, pretty sloppy, bouncing around pretty good. And then all of a sudden, the engine kind of sputters. <coughs> spits out this big cloud of black smoke and just dies. And there we are, dead in the water, five miles offshore, can't see land. Little bit, I mean, a little bit hazy, kind of like this, to where, you know, you're four miles out, you can't see land. And uh, Dad, and, <laughs> Dad and Uncle Bob do their thing, pull the engine cover off, pull out their extensive toolbox consisting of a pair of channel locks, uh, one rounded over screwdriver and, uh, and a half a roll of electric tape. <laughs> Thank God for that electrical tape. So yeah, they fiddle fuck with the thing for 20 minutes. And, you know, nothing. They're not getting anywhere. So Dad says, don't worry, boys. We got a radio. Coast Guard's just right over there. Whenever you're in trouble, you call the Coast Guard. By God, they'll go through hell and high water to come get you. Don't you worry, boys. They'll be here. Then about 10 seconds later, he's kind of half whispers to Uncle Bob, I just hope the Coast Guard gets here in time, though. What? <laughs> what do you mean? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Ronnie and I are looking at each other, what? What's he talking about? Dad goes, well, well, yeah, I just hope they get here on time. You know, we're, we're out here fishing the, the, the whales out here. They eat these fish, too. And as long as our engines run, and they know they can't catch us, so they don't bother us, they leave us alone. But our engines broke. I mean, the whales come up and find us now, we could be in trouble. So you guys keep a sharp lookout. Holy shit! <laughs> Ronnie and I are just pissing ourselves. I mean, this is, if this was 12, or if this was, you know, 10 years ago, or back then, I could have had this man put away for 12 years, you know, psychological child abuse. Holy shit. So, yeah, you watch out. You guys keep a, keep a sharp lookout. So Ronnie and I are just white-knuckled on either side of the boat. 
disc in and back and forth. And if you're like today, if it's salmon season or hell any time, you're a couple miles off the Oregon coast, you're going to see a whale. And uh, about 10 minutes, Rod, Roddy finds the first one, spots the first one. Whale! Whale! He's right over there! He's right over there! Oh, God! And I'm looking, I'm screaming. And then, of course, Uncle Bob is all in 110% at this time. So then Dad and, and uh, Bob are both, oh, quiet, quiet, be quiet! Don't make any noise! Quiet down! Don't bump anything! Be quiet! Maybe he'll go by. Maybe he won't see us. So Ronnie and I are just pissing ourselves watching this spout a couple more times, and then it goes away. About 10 minutes later, I spot one on my side, and the same thing. Holy shit, there's the whales. Here they come. Quiet, quiet, squat down. Don't make any noise. Oh, God. You know, pretty soon, okay. That one goes by, too. And you got to understand, you got to understand, if you're out there, I don't, if you're five miles offshore, I don't care if your goddamn underwear is on fire. You're not calling Uber. It's going to take us a few minutes to get there. So, <laughs> you know, we're looking at 30 minutes anyway. And in all that time, yeah, we spot another whale, but, you know, we're all real quiet. You know, we're, we're going stealth here, and, and they, they miss us. They don't find us. And then, then I see coming out of the mist this big white boat with that red stripe down the side. And right along in here somewhere, the testosterone is going to kick in. So, like I say, boat ramp, if you want to tease me about it. But here comes that big white boat to save us from the whales. Seven-year-old kid. Man, when they got up to us, I didn't give two shits about the whales, the boat, my dad. I wanted to talk to these guys. I wanted to know what their story was. I wanted to hear about that boat. And they, you know, they obviously recognize the fact that I'm just totally enamored with them. And they invite me over. Say, hey, Skipper, can your boy come over on our boat? Dad says, hell yeah, just throw him back when you're done. And uh, so I'm on the Coast Guard boat. Ronnie didn't want to go, so it's just me. They get that line hooked up. They get the tow stabilized. You know, got the proper scope of the length of the tow line, so you're riding the crest at the same time. That's what you do when you're coxswain. And the coxswain, the guy in charge of the boat, says, Hey, Billy, hey, Billy, get up here in the seat. You want to take over? I'm just going, you got to be fucking kidding me. Hell yeah. So here I am, seven years old, at the wheel, hand on the throttle, looking over my shoulder, towing my dad in. Ah, oh, fuck me. <sighs> that makes an impression on a seven-year-old boy that lasts a lifetime. I knew in that moment what I wanted to do and where I was going to do it right here. Yeah. See? Now it's okay. The testosterone comes and goes. But, like I say, <laughs> I wouldn't trade it. But anyway, yeah. God, where was I? Towing my dad in. That was amazing. It made such an impression that 12 years later, Every recruit company, when they graduate, well, first of all, from second one, minute one, hour one, day one, everything in boot camp is scored. The way you breathe, the way you eat, the way you tie your shoes, everything and everything is scored. And upon graduation, there's a ceremony, usually the Master Chief of the Coast Guard presiding. And there's a great big board. And everybody has a copy of that in advance. There's a great big board that lists every available billet everywhere in the world where there's Coast Guard. And of course, the top man gets top pick and then on down the list. <sighs> and 
and when the Master Chief of the Coast Guard called me up to make the first pick, he turns to me and says, well, son, where do you want to go? I swear to God. I just said, hell, Chief, that's easy. You sent me to Coose Bay. Right here. I love this place. Yeah, and that's my little Coast Guard story. That's where it all happened. And then, of course, get out of the guard. I fell into an opportunity to join the Merchant Marines and sail around the world a couple times and, you know, all that good shit. But there's a couple good stories about that boat ramp up there. In fact, the, the boat, boat ramp is actually just right directly behind you about two miles. The uh, lookout tower is just over your uh, left shoulder back there. Yeah, some good boat ramp stories. But I'll leave you with that. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Seriously. I mean, I'm new to this too. <laughs> I'm new here too. Uh, but I'm having a hell of a lot of fun. So I'm going to let you go here. That's how everything got started. So council meeting is adjourned. I thank everybody for attending. Bang of the gavel. Now get back to work, you bastards. <laughs> Salute.